Hey traders, what's going on? This is Chris from Verulo Trading. This is a YouTube channel where we talk about trading, do platform tutorials, and we also talk a little bit about the business of trading and trading psychology. This video in particular is going to be covering more of the business side of trading and the reality side of trading or day trading. So if you wanted to learn more about that or if you just wanted to hear about some of my own experiences in the marketplace and my own thoughts, then you found the right video. That's what we're going to talk about here today. So guys, remember to hit the like button and subscribe because that's how YouTube works. In order for this video to be shown to other people, you need to click that like button. Let's get it. So I'm going to cover three or four different points here relating to the reality of trading as a business and why I think it's one of the hardest things that anybody can choose to do. And um, I've realized this over time of uh, trying to do it myself. So you might have a few thoughts and realizations as you watch the video, but don't be alarmed. I'm simply trying to share with people out there some of my own experiences in the marketplace. And I would love to hear your thoughts down below on anything that I might mention in this video. The first point is here, I want to say that trading needs to be boring. And number two, you need to like trading to be a trader. The reason why it needs to be boring is something that's not very uncommon in any kind of professional environment. Anything that you master, once you become proficient in something, generally it becomes pretty much boring because the, the fire and drive that you had that propelled you to get what you wanted to get in this case, proficiency in trading or in a certain way of trading, once you have that, then it's boring, right? And that's normal. It needs to be boring, in fact, because when it's boring, you're now focused on the overall process of what's going on and how each and every one of your decisions comes together and forms your week end, month end, and year end result. And in my opinion, this is really what's important. So definitely as a day trader, it's super boring because you develop a certain niche way of doing your business and you only basically have to wait for the right signals to appear. And if you're not waiting for the right signals, then you're over trading most probably. And when you're waiting for those signals, it's very gut wrenching or boring. And you can also end up in scenarios where you wait a long time for a trade and then you ended up taking a scratch or some kind of a break even or a smaller win than you expected. That could be due to a number of things. In fact, it might be just that the market is not very volatile and it's not offering that much profit, right? So this is something that is probably one of the hardest things to adjust to for traders and people that get into trading. The first thing is, of course, that trading is a variable income business. It really requires you to become a master of your psychology in order to deal with these ups and downs. And one way that I deal with that is that I do not put a lot of focus onto my short term results. So I'll trade, I'll review my trades, I'll make fine adjustments if I have to, but I'm really more concerned about what's happening at the end of the week and especially at the end of the month. So that's sort of how we can put it into perspective um, and to not be too results oriented in the short term. So like I said, trading needs to be boring, but you need to like trading. You need to enjoy sitting there and waiting for your trades because you know that when you wait for the trades, you tend to take better trades. They're higher quality trades that tend to work out better or they're trades that offer a lower amount of risk for a higher potential reward. Um, sometimes they can even be risk free in some scenarios, depending on how you see things. If you're a scalper, a lot of scalpers look for a win or scratch opportunities. Sometimes the market offers this type of opportunity. Other times it can be a lot harder to manage. So the reality of trading is that it is a grind and the grind is for today, the week, the month, the year and the next few years. One bad decision you make does not matter so much in the grand scheme of things. And if you do give too much precedence to your very good trades or your very bad trades, you're going to experience a roller coaster of emotions, basically. And that's what happens to traders is that they go on a roller coaster of emotions. So I was talking with a friend of mine yesterday after my trading day, and I was a little bit frustrated because I had a bit of a frustrating day where I kind of gave back a few ticks of open profit and I was kind of venting and talking about it. And then I thought to myself and I said, you know, would I be having this conversation right now if I would have simply locked in those profits, you know, and everything was fine and dandy? Would I be having potentially a different type of conversation? Would I be more euphoric or overconfident and confident in my trading abilities uh, than I am now? Instead, in that moment, I was talking about how I was pissed about the fact that I realized that the market was more of a scalping type of day and I was failing to lock in, you know, those one R, one and a half R scalps. And 
what happened with those specific trades is that you know you get into a three or four tick winner in the bond market and then it snaps back in your face all of a sudden you have at best a two tick winner if you're lucky but they actually ended with all break evens so you know that's pretty annoying when you get a four or five tick winner or if you trade nasdaq it would be like a five ten point winner that ends up always coming back to break even you know what i mean so definitely you can get frustrated and uh, that's going to be the other point i'm going to talk about in the video is one of the reasons why trading is so hard is because of the emotional roller coaster and that's why if you think about trading from a year-end perspective you're going to be able to kind of mitigate some of those short-term euphoria and fear regarding making a mistake or overconfidence with a certain trade okay so let's move on now to the second point i wanted to cover here and this is how i think about trading totally and it's that trading is risk activity completely it's nothing else other than risk activity um, you know, you can make certain arguments and say, okay, well, I'm a long-term investor or I'm a short-term day trader or scalper. At the end of the day, you're still putting on risk and you need to have a risk management plan of some kind, right? The risk management plan of a scalper is going to be drastically different than the plan of a long-term investor because someone who buys a stock now based on fundamental or macro environment um, is not buying it for the same reason as a scalper is buying it right now because they see that they're pumping bids and pulling offers, for example. It's just a matter of having a risk management plan and following that risk management plan for the strategies that you employ. Now, I'll share with you a couple things here that I learned. So this is where most traders mess up, even experienced traders. The risk that you take has to be relative to your overall bankroll. Remaining true to this simple rule has the potential to make or break your trading. The reason I say this is because I spoke to an ex-risk manager, now a broker, who has been in the industry for over 20 years, maybe longer, and they told me this. The main thing that the successful traders that they have seen in their career had in common is this. The risk they took relative to their account size was always very small, sometimes even below 1% per bet. Repeat that to yourself every time you think about doubling or tripling down on a trade. In this video, I can't teach you how to trade and manage trades, but I can, however, give you a few ideas that might have the potential to help you. So definitely, definitely this resonates with me a lot, especially when you feel emotions overcoming you as you're trading. For example, today was a Friday, it was relatively slow. Some days I call it frustration Fridays when the market gets very one-sided and uh, grinding one-sided action type of thing. So I have a certain degree of confidence in my trading method, but at the same time, I've been grinding in my PL for three days straight and I've been making, you know, newbie mistakes potentially at times, like giving back profits. You know, you can argue whether those were newbie mistakes, but again, based on the context of what was present, potentially my decisions were not the best decisions that could have been made, right? So what I determined here is that my result over the last few days and today as well has the potential to contribute to frustration. I definitely experienced a high degree of frustration and I have experienced similar frustration in the past to the point where now when I feel it, I have an easier time stopping myself from trading, standing up, taking a deep breath, right? So as soon as I feel the frustration or if I see that I got stopped for an extra tick or if I see that I made a, a mistake that what I categorize as like kind of a, a newbie mistake, I will say it out loud, I am now frustrated. I'm feeling frustrated. And then I'll get up, walk around, check out the scene, you know, and just basically get away from the screen. Because in that moment, if you sit there and keep looking at it and don't acknowledge it, you're going to make probably a bad decision. And a bad decision would be something like putting on more risk than you should be. And, you know, it's easy to put on more risk than you should be, especially when you have a broker that offers you low day trading margins, like in futures trading. So, you know, the difference between me putting on one or two contracts is really not that big for my broker or clearing firm. But for the size of my account, that difference is a very substantial difference because if that trade happens to be the one that goes against me, then I'm kaput and I lost two times more than what I should on one trade. And um, definitely over time, when you have streaks of choppiness in your results, it is very normal to feel frustration and feel the urge to size up to make back 
you know, the thousand cuts that you've been losing slowly, right? You have, you might add like 10, 15 trades. You see some of them, you gave back profit, a lot of break evens, a couple of one tick losses. Overall, you're down. And now you're frustrated and you want to put on double the size because you're confident in your trading method that you can make it back in one or two trades. Well, again, the way you get around that is by looking at it from the longer perspective, guys. You, you simply cannot look at it and say this trade is the one because you don't know if it's going to be the one, right? What you do know is that you're confident in your abilities overall to read the market, but you still don't know if the next trade is going to be the one that builds your account up. So you need to be ready for if it is going to be the one, but you also can't be ready to double your risk on any one trade because you still don't know if that trade is going to be a good one, right? And that's why I'm definitely a fan of adding risk onto only winning trades and not leveraging on trades that are clearly against you. And um, when you scalp in a strategy that's called all in all out, it's actually really hard to do this. Um, because normally, you need to get paid on the trade and you get in and then you have to get paid at some point. Adding to the trade after you're in sometimes is tricky, you can do it in some scenarios, but it doesn't always work. And it all depends on how much size you're able to work based on your risk tolerance. Okay, so maybe I go on a bit of a tangent, but I hope that some of this stuff helps people. And uh, this is really stuff that I've been working on. So the third point here now is going to be understanding and developing your method of trading. So I would say that this step probably takes the longest. It is important that a trader gains a fundamental knowledge about how the market operates, how their market operates, in order to understand how they will be trading it from their own perspective, for their own business, based on what they're comfortable with. It is true that it is not easy to pinpoint this information on the internet. I think that's by design. But I will list some fundamentals to keep you on track. So you want to learn how the market operates. How a market operates is with supply and demand, fundamentally, right? Market specific. Some markets have more liquidity at each price point. Some markets tend to be very trendy or they might be in somewhat of a trendy environment. Other markets tend to be more rotational and this changes on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, there are certain things that you would consider to be market specific, certain nuances that you have identified that happen more in these markets rather than other markets, okay? And then of course, you know, fundamentals about how the market operates, bids, offers, supply and demand, participants, who's involved with trading these markets, you know, you have many firms, investment bankers and all of that. And then of course, the sentiment of the marketplace, you know, how are traders perceiving it? What is the news currently in play? And how is the market reacting to that news or sentiment that's happening right now? So these are sort of fundamental things that you need to know about your marketplace in order to help you to build your method to trade it. The next thing is, Everybody makes money the same way in trading. You either buy low and sell high or sell high and buy back lower, but relative to what? That's the tricky part. So how do you determine what high is or what low is? And also how do you determine the strategy to employ as to if you should be looking to buy high and sell higher or buy low to sell higher? The opposite of that would be selling high or selling low depending on what type of price action we currently have and what kind of market you're trading, you know, you need to understand why you would employ either one of those methods. And it's not that simple. So you need a process and a method of grading the potential opportunities based on the market behavior that you understand. This takes a lot of time of studying market behavior and learning to understand how probabilities shift in real time. Example, depending on the overall context and how that market is trading on that given day, in that given moment, one method of trading would be favorable over another. One trader could teach you a certain method of trading, but because of the nature of markets right now, this method of trading requires a certain context to be present in order for it to work at its best. If that context is not there, the method would generate false signals, and in some cases, doing the opposite might be the better choice. So. Definitely, guys, there's no such thing as like a one size fits all type of trading method. You really need to be able to be somewhat discretionary and understand why you would employ that type of trade for that type of day or that type of price action. 
Okay, so the last thing I'll cover in this video is understanding the importance of emotions. And I already covered it a little bit. I gave you a few examples of how you can have a buildup of frustration and how over time I've become more experienced in determining when I am experiencing an emotion and when I should be looking to step on the brakes and not trade as much. Definitely improving your overall understanding of your own emotions is very important as a trader. So I'll read you. A little paragraph. To tip off the iceberg, I want to present to you why I think despite spending hours studying or developing our process, trading may be one of the hardest businesses to succeed in long term. One reason for this is because trading tests us in ways that no other business does. Apart from the fact that trading tends to be a grind on the majority of trading days, and I referred to that earlier, um, about the fact that, you know, you might have four days break even in a row. And then the one day after that, you showed up and you were ready to go. And that was the day where you nailed it and you made back everything plus five times more because you caught, you know, non farm payrolls the right way or something like that. You just caught it the right way. And then it just worked out. The thing is, is that this is the problem with trading part time. Some guys say, Oh, I can only show up uh, three out of five days. But what if you were chopping on the three days and then the day you didn't show up happened to be the one where you would have had the cleanest read on the market and the day where you were also feeling the most relaxed and in the zone with what you were seeing. You didn't show up that day because you didn't have the discipline to show up every day. And this is why I think that trading part time is really tricky, especially regards to uh, day trading scalping. With swing trading, it's different. You know, it's a much larger time frame and you have an idea of what you're expecting in the trade over a much greater time frame. So you don't have to be staring at it all the time. Definitely, if you do any kind of shorter term scalping type of business, you're going to have to show up on the slow days and you're going to have to learn how to survive on the slow days. This is really one of the hardest things. So again, relating to the emotions thing, apart from the fact that trading tends to be a grind on the majority of trading days, most of us do not understand how important it is to understand the markets from an emotional perspective. And what I mean by that is that price action is driven by human decisions. It doesn't matter if the trades are executed by machines. It's not possible to remove emotions from trading because that is like saying if you got into an accident that you didn't feel any pain. It just simply is not possible unless you were on anesthetic drugs. You would totally be lying to yourself. And in order to stay in the state of making good decisions, you would want to know when you're feeling an emotion. So what I'm basically trying to say is that in order to remain in the state of making good decisions consistently and remaining true to ourselves and to our process, we really need to understand when we are being triggered in one way or another. And in order to understand this, you need to study about your emotions and you need to dig deeper. So one book that really helped me was the book, The Mental Game of Trading by Jared Hendler. And I think it presents a relatively good guide or system for starting to help traders understand how they can resolve their emotions in real time. So I found that it helped me. But I can also say that over time, you definitely get better at doing this yourself anyways. Um, but you have to be ready for the stuff that he presents to you in the book in order for it to be relevant to you. So it just happened that at the time that I picked up that book and started reading it, I was in fact ready to read those words on the page. That's what I got to say to you guys today. So out of the four points that I mentioned in the video here, I think I was able to cover a decent amount of ground when it comes to how we can understand trading as a business and why trading is such a hard business to succeed in. And a lot of it has to do with dealing with the slow periods and learning how to press the gas pedal on days where you can clearly see what's going on and learning how to press the brakes and really not rush things when you see that the day is slow or the day is just not what you thought or maybe you had a read, you got something out of it, you might have made a newbie mistake and then you start to feel frustration. Now the next decision, if you hadn't resolved that frustration, is going to be impacted by the frustration and you might make a decision you regret in the long run. So definitely this is why it's so hard. This also might partially be why a lot of advanced uh, firms, traders, money managers use robots to execute their trades or to find trades for that matter. Um, and that's it. So if any of you guys have any comments to add or things you would like to say in the comments, please do that. And I really appreciate all of you for watching this and I will see you soon and take care. Ciao.